Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, Meathead. And cunt means coward. Vagina means coward, which you all are. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we had some people ask, uh, I'm not, not going to discuss it on uh, YouTube because it's not germane to them because they haven't been to the seminar. Asked me about hardcore, and I had some questions last night before dinner, and actually during dinner, so I'll, I'll explain that briefly for five minutes after we get off YouTube. Um, We're building up uh, asshole by asshole. Who are the bigger assholes? Like, you know, uh, who's the greater fool theory? Um, you saw some things, but let's start off with Steve, who I happen to have met personally many years ago. Uh, um, yeah. He was an asshole? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, other than you, you guys are not, other than you guys, everybody's an asshole who's got any fucking money. If, if you haven't figured that out, just go home. And if you can't be an asshole, I mean, go home. Don't waste my time on trying to be, put some numbers on the Hall of Fame. I mean, don't you get it? Okay, he's an asshole. Oh, yes, sir. He's focused, driven, and determined. He's a, yeah, yeah. He's Which a lot, poor people call that an asshole. Yeah. He held everybody accountable for their actions. Unlike you've lived your lives. Yeah, what else? Yes, sir. Ruthless and demanding. Yes, sir. Uh, he only wanted to hire the best people, so A players, no B players. Yeah, and do you have your brothers, your mothers, and your cousins instead, which are all worth a sh not worth a shit. If I walked in, well, I, I close almost every, uh, maybe one or two exceptions, I close your businesses down. But, for the, uh, but if I didn't close your businesses down, I'd fire all the people. Every single swinging dick you got in your business. Brothers, mothers, cousins, and I especially like to boot moms out. Boom! I never played soccer, but I would. Boom! Give them a Beckham kick. Because they're all worthless. What else? Yes, sir. Failure wasn't an option for him? I can't remember the last time I failed. I can't remember. All you have is memories of your last failure. That's why you're here. Yes, ma'am. He has no emotions. He let his ex-wife and his daughter uh, go on welfare. While his company was being valued at 400 million. So what? She should have kept her fucking legs together. Stupid bitch. Now see, you look at it the opposite. Yeah. He helped people on a tight schedule. Goals. He didn't meet it. Time frames. It's his way or no way. A lot of people try to push him. Hey, well, I, you know, uh, I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, it's, it's basically President Trump. <laughs> yes, sir. He didn't believe in binary. There was no room for two companies at the top. His was the best. Correct. And the guys that have found it, I mean, uh, Lee Iacocca said this many years ago when he, was, uh, uh, when he left Ford and went to Chrysler. If you're not first or second, um, you should get out of the business. And if you're second, it's because you're trying to be first. But companies that are third, fourth, and fifth place don't become first. And I tell people uh, on the internet, the great thing about the internet is the results are instantaneous. Some of you have been finger-fucking with programs um, and apps and shit like that for not hours, not days, not weeks, not months, but years. And you don't get it. It doesn't work. You know what the average big time marketing um, companies, how much they, they, they um, use to test the, uh, an idea or a product? $1,000. 500 to 1000 bucks. Now how many thousands have you put in your pieces of dog shit? Because the great thing about the internet is results are instantaneous. 
So if your results after nine months are still dog shit, guess what? It's dog shit. What else? Yes, in the back. It's very interesting that after she- Oh, it's very interesting. Well, I'm glad that you thought it was very interesting, but- uh, After Lisa proved that she was smart, she really liked her. Oh yeah, well, I mean, but that goes like, you know, well, I've seen that. And then she gave, he gave yeah, money and everything. Yeah, but I mean, that, but, but, but if she hadn't been smart, he wouldn't have given her a fucking dime. So he applied the same thing. A players and everything, family, friends, employees, he looked at it the same way. Except he fucked some B players, and that's why, uh, but anyway, <laughs> that, uh, you know, a, a stiff dick has no conscience. <laughs> I mean, a stiff dick has no conscience. Yes, ma'am. He was not an engineer or a programmer. Correct. And yet he ran one. Yeah, and the reason he was is because he, he didn't use the programmer's excuses and the engineer's excuses. For an engineer, the car would never leave the assembly line. It's never ready. You won't see next to no operating system. You, you'd be still, you guys would be spreadsheeting the operating system for next still, 25 years later. He was confident even though he could be wrong. Yeah, but see, right and wrong has... Uh, yeah, but I understand that. But confidence has nothing to do with right or wrong. If you've got... But you don't. Yeah. You didn't give a fuck what anyone thought of him. Well, you, you're describing the antithesis of you. Now, I mean... Am I losing my mind, or does everybody not see that you're describing the absolute opposite of everybody in this fucking room? Now somebody's going to, oh, why do that? And somebody's going to, well, why do that? So far, the successful traits, makeups, personalities, whatever you want to call it, that we've discussed, are 100% different than you. Somebody said, well, I did that once, and, uh, you know, I got a silver medal in karate, and uh, fuck you, and the horse you rode in on. These have people we're describing that have, once they clicked, success after success after success after, even their failures were better than any success in this room. Uh, Steve Jobs, I... I believe he was a little too early in the market. Not that he wasn't successful, but he, he just brought product to market. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, Henry Ford I was too early in the market, too. And he, he made 14 million black cars. Because he says, if you ask the customer what they wanted, they'd still want bu uh, buggies and horses. Most of you in this room are in the buggy whip business. And uh, what's the market for buggy whips? Zero, right? Most of you in this room are in the, uh, uh, would still be using Smith Corona typewriters. Not even the electric IBMs with a ball thing. Most of you are too young to know about it. You're in the buggy whip business. That's why you should just walk away from your businesses. But your employees won't understand that you're in the buggy whip business. Because it's going to be their first opportunity to own anything. Uh, yes, sir. He categorized his employees as A team and B team. A team listened to him. If B team did not listen, he had to get rid of it. He got rid of the B team so they don't. Decide. Yeah, well, see, I, I see. Uh, that's an error in his, in my judgment. It's an error in his judgment because you can have more than one A team. Remember, you talked about competing companies yesterday. Yes. Okay. Well, you have competing teams. I had teams in India, I had teams in South Africa, I had teams in uh, the Philippines, I had teams in the um, United States, all competing against one another. And lo and behold, the team that beat all those other teams, which I would have never bet, I would have bet my life on it, was the Filipinos. We had three offices in South Africa, and I mean, they just, not because they're smarter, um, although some of the Filipinos, two of which are standing in this room, I might think that they're smarter, but um, I would have bet all my money that um, the um, Filipinos wouldn't have been the, the most uh, powerhouse team that I had. But the B team was pushing a different agenda. That's why you had to get rid of them. Yeah, well, I mean, that, but see, well, Steve Jobs did not excel in management. He excelled in leadership. 
Not man. He, he didn't know fuck all about management. All leaders, not great leaders, all they know is who can give them success on the battlefield. That's all they know. That's all they want to know. All the rest is bullshit. Because you're needed, you you feel like you should be needed, uh, and you're wanted, and you're insecure, and all the things that I've already beat to death. Uh, you you want to, even. When you fire somebody, you want them to like you. Those are mutually exclusive events. What else about, uh, uh, yeah? Uh, he plays them like an orchestra, so shows his leadership. Correct, correct. Yes, sir. Even though he didn't recognize Lisa as his daughter, she was the biggest inspiration for him. Well, I mean, that may be. That's the nice story. If that, but that, I don't, uh, having known him briefly, I, that's a horseshit. He doesn't forgive, he doesn't forget, he's revengeful. Never apologize. Remember that I said if we had the big hitters behind the screen here, they would be shitting themselves laughing at you? They'd be even laughing more now. You're saying the obvious, but nobody teaches it. And for those of you that leave here and decide that you're not going to do QLA and you write in Reddit that QLA doesn't work, and there will be some of you, I know. I said, you didn't work because you're a lazy cunt. And I can say that and be 99% right about everybody in the room because i not just because I've been doing this over 26 years, but because 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet are cunts. And that's why the snowflake mentality has permeated the world, except for Russia. Now, Russia... QLA is a slam motherfucking dunk for the Ruskies. And Ukraine is still pretty tough. But the rest, the Eastern Europe have fallen to shit. They're just vaginas, flapping vaginas. And in the Americans, I mean, it's, we are so fucking lucky they didn't wake up Hitler and he unleashes 115 uh, panzer divisions on Normandy. We are so motherfucking lucky. Otherwise, we'd be all going Zeke Heil. But they were afraid to wake a little fucker up, and so we were able to uh, get a beach, a beach hold footing on the beaches of Normandy. We're so lucky, well, Americans are so lucky that that fucking guy, Ferguson, Captain Ferguson, didn't shoot General uh, Washington, because it wasn't considered sporting manly to shoot a guy in the back. Little twists of fate. Some of you can, uh, uh, can blame, if you want to use the word blame, or uh, you being here on a twist of fate. So many times I hear, uh, you came up on my feed, I'm not sure that what that means, but I guess you, the, you get shit when you're on YouTube and I don't even know if I, if I have a feed. Do I have a feed? Yeah? Okay. Um, and you saw me. Now, what if you get up to go take a piss and you miss me? But some of you have taken years to get here. Not because you couldn't afford it. Because you looked at, you try to find my Achilles heel. You, you've tried, you've spent years trying to find my chink in the QLA armor. And there ain't any, and that's that poor English. But since you're all illiterate anyway, it doesn't make, make a fuck. You spent years trying to find the chink in my armor. Yet you, you go see all the other guys not even doing any research. Because most of you are going to fail. Not because I want you to fail. Because down deep inside, you know you're not worthy. What else about Steve? Yes, sir, in the back. He had a relentless focus on his vision, and he didn't spend time to explain to others what his vision is. He rather thought he'll just do it and explain to them later or not explain at all? Not explain at all. The, the big guys don't explain. 
that's poor English plain. Costa Grazos, the CEO of um, Onassis Shipping, who I had the privilege of being mentored by for a number of years. Um, people were afraid to ask him a question because he would, might say, you don't know the answer to that? Pack your bags. And that's why you're not going to talk to your dream team. The system is perfect, but the, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What else? He was not okay with losing. Uh, the other guy said, I'm okay with losing. He said, I'm not. Nobody is. I mean, <laughs> none of the guys, I hang away their chill. I don't chill or hang. But anyway, uh, it's like uh, failure is not an option for Apollo 8. I think it was Apollo 8. Failure is not an option. Failure is your only option. That's why you're here. What else? He was persistent in the face of failure after he got kicked out of his... So you're just... Uh, you're all your not all. There was a guy that uh, distilled QLA down to 756 statements. This is what I get. This is what you give me. So fucking Nimrod. I thank you though, but 756 statements. This is QLA for him. I don't know how long it took him to do this. I hope it didn't take him long, but. You don't believe, you don't want to believe. Again, remember I said, this, and this is the, it, it went kind of uh, viral, uh, this comment. I said that if, in fact, the stuff that worked to create generational wealth and you knew about it and you, because that's why I'm the last resort. I'm the last town and the world is flat. I'm the last saloon, the last bar and the last town and the world's flat. You either make it with this or you fall off the abyss, basically. And that's why some of you take so long to get here. And some of you on YouTube, God, God love them, are, are still studying it. And high-performance people make decisions quickly and changes their, change their minds slowly. They make decisions quickly and change their minds slowly. And you use just the opposite. Because once you make a decision, you want everybody to like it. Because that's in some way makes you feel better because you're liked. And when we talk about not on camera about, you know, uh, what you're afraid of and blah, 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 blah. You have, you, have no, you have no idea how liberating it is. You've got these, now, we've got commercials now on TV for fat people. Fat clothes. I, they don't call it fat clothes. But I don't know. Full body. Some horse shit. Who gives a fuck what a fat pig wears? Well, the 2% of the fat pigs, I guess. Is that it? In 1953 or 4, my dad, God, God rest his soul, uh, was, and I was uh, like 8, 7, something like that. He, uh, we're watching television and uh, the first TV we had was about seven inches. It was that, that big. It had a big mahogany kind of thing around it, but the fucking TV was only that big. And uh, it was slightly after that because we had more than a seven. We may had a 10-inch TV then. And um, I'm in the kitchen eating because, I, you know, I was, I, I was always eating. Like the fat guys in here, I was always eating. And I know you fat guys don't eat. you got a thyroid problem. Mm, bullshit. Anyway, so I'm in the kitchen eating. And Danny, get in here. Get your ass in here. And it was the first... Feminine hygiene commercial for Kotex. Kotex, not tampon Kotex. Where they, you know, do they still make Kotexes for women? It, it, it's kind of like a little blanket that you put up against your, your snatch. You know, <laughs> they're supposed to, uh, and they got thick ones for heavy bleeders and all. I used to like, I used to like heavy bleeders myself, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I could give a whole seminar on that. Okay, now, and he says, Dan, this is the beginning of the uh, the end of the of mankind. He told me. Beginning of the end of mankind. Why do we need to know about fem feminine hygiene? Of course, 60% of the products, we didn't maybe know then, but now we know 60% of all the products that are purchased are purchased by women. That's why they market to them. Eh, fat, feminine hygiene. Then about 
15 years later, maybe 20 years later, the first illustration of tampons, how you put in a tampon in a woman, you know, the illustration, they show the, the, I called my dad, I forget where the fuck I was, I was in New York, and he was retired in Palm Desert, and uh, I was able to get a hold of him, and he had trouble hearing at the end, so I'm screaming and yelling at him, um, and uh, I said, Dad, if that was the end of mankind, what the fuck is it now? And I explained to him what was on television, and then he searched until for two or three days until he found the fucking commercial. <laughs> and then he called me. And one of the only times he's ever called me in my whole life. And he said, oh my God. I was so, because you like to exaggerate, Danny. I was hoping you were exaggerating. But you're right, we're finished. We're, we're fucking finished. Why? You know, not all countries do those advertisements. Do you know that? Why? There is no why. Okay, what else about C? Yes, sir, in the back. He saw five, six, seven, ten steps ahead of everybody else, and then he made the decisions in the short term, indifferent to what other people felt or thought, knowing... Five now, see, I have trouble relating that. See, I can see five years in advance, or ahead, but I can't see the steps that takes you to get to five years. I can see... 20 years in advance, but I don't, and not everybody, some people see it like Steve did. Some people, but most, uh, and supposedly were gifted. But anyway, the important thing is not for you to see. The problem is that you're gonna spend all the time thinking of the steps, the questions you're already asking about what do we do at an IPO? Who gives a shit? I want you to get your dick wet once first. Forget an IPO. Forget a strategic buyer. Forget all that shit. Just get your dick wet. Get your willy wet. And a couple in the room, based on the homework anyway, from not tonight because I haven't seen it, but from uh, last night, you understand what quantum leap means. Quantum leap in 1993, I was getting ready to go to a financial conference in Los Angeles. And uh, I've turned some television on, poured a drink. And I was at the hotel at the airport, LA airport, and uh, the program Quantum Leap was on with Scott Bakula about when he could go from time zone to time zone, thousands of years ahead, blah, 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 blah. And that, I was fascinated that, uh, because someday we will be able to do that. So the next day, when I'm at this financial conference, um, I named my uh, new financial model, which is QLA, I said it was Quantum Leap Advantage based on me here, me seeing that thing the night before from Scott Bakula. And here we are 26 years later, and Bruce Whipple happened to be there, at that, and that's when I first met Bruce, February 1993. And um, you'd be still doing research. I got an email from somebody that went to the May seminar. He's still, um, his, the program's over for him, the mental program's over. Um, he just thought I'd want to know that he's, Narrowed it down to two different industries. <laughs> One, I couldn't give a fuck if he died today. That's for starters. And number two, I told him it was going to take him a year. So he, he, he's, he's in a hurry to get it done before a year. Just to pick an industry, not to do a deal. Was he an engineer? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Don't write me. I don't give a fuck. Most of the people that listen to me on YouTube understand I really don't care. But there's still a few. There's still a few. Okay, what else? Ma'am. 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 assistance that took care of everything. Assistance, right? Yes. So he could focus on the important And he went a step beyond what I do. Uh, he uh, wore the same clothes every day. He had 25 of those uh, black jersey pullovers, long sleeve, and, and 20 pair of black jeans, I guess. Uh, but I mean, I, I have my clothes laid out. My clothes are laid out every, every day, excuse me, by uh, Edward. And so uh, I do as least, the least amount possible. Uh, and, and some would say that's why I was a shitty father, because I 
delegated, farmed out everything to nannies and governesses and my wife. I didn't do shit. I changed one diaper with three kids. And I was shamed. I was belittled for change, to change the diaper because shit was rolling down the inside. I don't know how I had Danny with me at a meeting. I don't, that I don't recall. But it happened because he was there. And, and shit was rolling down. Uh, 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 the, uh, and he didn't have a little pair of shorts. I just had his diaper on. I don't know how that happened anyway. But and shit was rolling down the inside of his leg. And, uh, and you know, he's and it's getting on the floor and shit. And I'm just talking. I'm skim- And one of the guys who I still know, he says, Dan, Jesus Christ, let's change the fucking diaper. So I picked him up by his little hand. And uh, we were in a building. And we went to the men's room. And I took his little diaper off. And it was one of these uh, uh, fountains that, uh, you know, that goes like this. And I took one leg and one hand. And I'm like this, <laughs> washing them. You know, and he's looking up at me. I still remember that look. And so then we had no diapers. So then we got paper towels. And we went into an office and we got um, a stapler. (laughs) And I made a diaper uh, the best I could with the help of a couple of my buddies that were there. And that's the only diaper I ever changed. Would you do it again? Yeah, I wouldn't change a fucking diaper. I wouldn't even change it. I would just let the shit roll down his leg. (laughs) That's bullshit. What is the... Is, are you going to bond with the little fuck faces? Is that why you change diapers? You've all got a reason, right? You, told, you show me, just like if you, can, if you can pay for your credit cards with, um, car, uh, not karma, what did I say? Zen. Zen, thank you. With Zen, you let me know. If changing a diaper in any way, shape, manner, or form, allows you to create generational wealth, I'll jump from the motherfucking tower over here without a parachute. Okay, YouTube, thank you.